maybe for uh, people that are looking to dip their toe into betting hockey with NFL behind us, yeah. or maybe new people to hockey in general, why don't you break down your method of capping puck lines over there in the NHL? For sure. Well, first of all, what is a puck line? And a puck line is like a run line in baseball. Right. It's always the same. It's always one and a half. Now, you can bet alternate ones if you like, yeah. but most times minus one and a half is safe because, believe it or not, most hockey games are one goal games and a lot go to overtime. However, you can find your spots where the puck line is the better bet. Usually when the favorite, the chalk is just too much. So you want to make a puck line play. So too much juice for the favorite. And I'm going to go back to the Montreal-Anaheim game that I had in my video on the Tuesday show. Sure. Uh, Anaheim was uh, a huge underdog. So I said, well, let's try Montreal as a puck line favorite. And what else do you look for? Well, does the underdog team give up a lot of shots or goals against? And yes, the answer is yes for Anaheim, yeah. who I'm going to use a lot in this segment yeah. because they're the perfect team to bet the puck line against because you have to pick your spots with the puck line. It's not always a smart bet. It might be too risky. Uh, another one is if the team, the favorite, especially if they're at home, if they're in the top 10 of the league in scoring, that means they play a high-tempo game. They're usually also getting a lot of shots on goal. So if they're playing a weaker team, they're probably going to get that extra couple of goals during the game. Power play penalty kill statistics is also very, very important when looking at the puck line. I look for a discrepancy there. Again, I talked about Calgary and San Jose tonight. Now, both of those teams are really good on the power play, both weak on the penalty kill. So I'd stay away from a puck line there. Or if I got a good puck line value, plus one and a half for the underdog, but unlikely in that matchup. And uh, the average loss margin of the underdog team. So you talk about the Anaheim Ducks again coming in. They're in Ottawa tonight. Yeah. Five losses in a row for Anaheim, all of them by more than one and a half goals. Okay. So, you know, that's something you look at. And you also look at if it's a backup goaltender, if they're on a back-to-back. -back. Uh, Montreal, Anaheim the other night, it was a back-to-back -back for Anaheim. They were using their backup goaltender, and the Montreal bet paid off. Excellent. Great stuff there. And you've been talking about the Ducks and, uh, yeah, they're at the Sens tonight. Mm -hmm. Sens minus one and a half, plus 225 on that. <laughs> yeah, it's high. Maybe on a normal night you wouldn't play it, but because I've taken advantage of the Anaheim Ducks for the last week and a half, yeah. I played it just, you know, with the winnings there to see if the trend goes. Ottawa played last night is the difference. This is three and four for Anaheim, but Ottawa played a good game in Toronto last yep. night. Uh, and listen, Anaheim's just in the perfect spot for this. They've lost 18 of their last 20 games. Yeah, that's you were t you know? telling me about that off camera. That's a crazy stat. Yeah, it's absolutely crazy. And the team has kind of given up under head coach Randy Carlisle. I know you and John talked a lot at the beginning of the year about new coaches and the team getting a boost. The situation in Anaheim is that their AHL team, their, their Tier 1 affiliate, is having a really good year. Yeah. So they don't want to upset the apple cart there. And they're probably just going to let the Ducks like ride out this season. So that's great news for betters.